Hi there again. So we are in module 11 of EBS OEM integration and in this module we are looking at how to troubleshoot and how to enable debug for any login request problems in Oracle eBusiness Suite with Oracle Access Manager. So in the previous lesson we looked at the user connect to eBusiness Suite URL with a port number of EBS HTTP server and request hits OHS. From OHS, it goes to OA core for OA underscore HTML. And then from there, because of the two profile options that we set for or that we integrate with Oracle Access Manager, that request is being forwarded to the EBS Access Gate Managed Server that is OAEA. And then that particular URL is protected by in Oracle Access Manager and hence users see a Oracle Access Manager login page. So on that login page, user will type user ID and password and on hit submit, it will go to the Oracle Access Manager and we'll see, we'll again see that in HTTP header and also in the browser. Then from when you hit submit from Oracle Access Manager, it will, the request will go to the OID. So on submit, if you get an error message that then look at Oracle Access Manager and OID. Once it's successfully authenticated from OID, then request will be sent to the EBS access gate again back to this URL here, which is access gate. So request will go to the EBS access gate and then from access gate, access gate will take this user ID to and the GUID to Oracle eBusiness Suite database and if a matching GUID is found or a matching UID is found, then user will be a ICX session will be created and that's how the user will be able to log in and go to the landing page. So let's start looking at after the login page, what happens and what we see in HTTP header. So I am in Oracle Access Manager login page that I got it by typing the EBS URL. And if you look at the HTTP header, I've cleaned the HTTP header. So anything which comes will going to come after this now. So when I type a user that I created EBS to OID 21 and password as welcome one at the rate one, two, three and hit login. So on submit, it's going currently to Oracle access manager. Oracle access manager will pick this user ID and password and validate against OID. After successful authentication, it will come back and the ORCL GUID header will be sent from the Oracle Access Manager to the web gate to the EBS access gate and access gate will then take this user ID and password and validate against the database. So if you notice, I am on the EBS landing page now and let's look at the tools header. How does header look like? So when I type my username and password, this is my header output that I've saved it in a text file and I'm displaying it here. So what happens is when you type the username and password and hit enter submit on that submit button, it's going to take that user ID and password and give it to Oracle access manager with the URL, something like auth cred submit, which means authentication credential submit. It's submitting the user ID and password. And after submitting the user ID and password, it's setting once authentication is successful, it has taken behind the scene, it has taken the user ID and password to OID. The user ID and password are successfully authenticated. And then I see it sets a cookie called OAM underscore ID. This is because our web gate is configured in ECC, which is embedded credential collector. There are two methods. One is ECC embedded credential collector and second is DCC detached credential collector. So by default, it's embedded credential collector. It's down to the web gate. When you configure the web gate by default, it configured into the embedded credential collector. And that's why you get a OAM underscore ID as a cookie. So this has successfully created the cookie. And now after creating the cookie, it's redirecting user back to the URL that user requested, which is this location access gate do SSO login. This is where the user was redirected to the login page. And after here access gate do SSO login, and now it's going to 
send this to EBS access gate after successful authentication. And then access gate will then take this user ID and the GUID that received from Oracle Access Manager to the EBS database. So if you see an HTTP header authentication is successful, but it's failing at this point, um, just going to the access gate, do SSO login. That means it's problem at access gate. And then you look at EBS access gate log file. How do you enable DB, uh, debug in EBS access gate? We'll cover that in subsequent lessons. Now, after it has gone to the access gate do and verified or validated against Oracle eBusiness Suite database, it now setting a another cookie specific to my with the name said and the value. So now this is setting a EBS cookie and then it's saying after successful authentication, it's redirecting me to OA.JSP, OA Oracle application.JSP under OA HTML, which is again OA HTML goes to the OA core applic managed server. And now user is presented with the landing page after successful authentication. And these are all images after that. It's all images and other things which are in, on the page. So this is how the login flow. You can check at what stage is failing, enable debug in appropriate component, and then you can troubleshoot and identify the root cause of the problem. So now let's look at how to enable debugging on each of these components that fall in the way of logging in end to end to Oracle eBusiness Suite via Oracle Access Manager. So the first thing user hit is the Oracle HTTP server for Oracle eBusiness Suite. So let's see how you enable logging or debugging in Oracle HTTP server for eBusiness Suite. So first of all, log configuration for EBS eBusiness Suite Oracle HTTP server is under Fusion Middleware Home. Inside that, there is a folder called Web Tier. Inside that Web Tier folder, there is an instances. And then instance name is going to be EBS underscore web underscore SID underscore OHS1. And then config OHS and then EBS underscore web underscore SID. Then the log file of this will go under same folder till here, but instead of config, there will be in diagnostics, logs, OHS, and then OHS or EBS underscore web underscore said. This is where the log file will go for HTTP server for EBS. Now, the log file mainly in that folder are console OHS log, and then also with the name EBS underscore web underscore said dot log. So do a LS minus LTR and look at the latest version or latest timestamp or file with the latest timestamp related to console and EBS web. Then you have another file in that folder or above folder where OHS logs are, that is access underscore log. And what this file contains is whenever you hit a web server of eBusiness suite, you look into or entry will go into the access log. And what this tells is if there's any reason if there's no connection between end user to the web server, let's suppose there's a firewall. That means user will not hit a one to the access log. So if you don't see the entry hitting an access log, that means either the OHS is down or there's a firewall or there's some configuration or some issue between user and Oracle HTTP server. So ensure that you troubleshoot the network path. So first thing you should do is whether check whether request is hitting an access log or not. Then there's another file or log file in that folder, which is oblog.log .log, and where ob stands for oblix and oblix was the name of the product or company that Oracle acquired that had the product Oracle Access Manager. So oblix was acquired by Oracle back in 2004, five and rebranded that product and did architectural changes and now Oracle Access Manager. So the log file for that web gate will be oblog.log. How to enable debugging on oblog.log we'll see in a separate section when we come to the web gate debugging. So this is how you will see the log configuration file. So log configuration will be under this folder in a file called httpd.conf. That's the main configuration file for Oracle HTTP server. In that httpd.conf, you should see a section like 
logging via ODL where ODL stands for Oracle Diagnostic Loader. And so currently my log directory is under this and log severity is warning 32 which means any messages which are warning or above those will be reported in the log file. If you want to change it to debug, you can change it to debug and colon 1 or 16 or 32. Info, other options are in debug, info, notice, warn, error and critical. Depending on from left to right, whatever is the value, the debugging will keep decreasing. So debug will do full logging and you'll get a lot of file or a lot of data into Oracle HTTP server log file. Critical will report only the critical problems. Ideally, default value is warning where you see the warning. Then another configuration in the same httpd.conf is related to access log file. So what it's saying is yeah, my logging is set to custom log and it's the value will go into this location access underscore log and 43200 I think it's the size of the file when it rotates. So access log once it becomes to a specific size then it's going to rotate on that. So this is the EBS logging. And this is how the output will look like or the log file. So this is the previous one was a configuration and this is the log file under this directory. So here this is still here, it's my Fusion middleware home. Then web tier instances and instance. So till here it's one Oracle HTTP server instance in that diagnostics, logs, OHS, and then component name. In that I have this file. These are the two files I need to look at the oblog.log ob is for obliques web gate or Oracle access manager web gate. We'll cover that in a separate section and then access log. Now you see httpd.pid which this PID file is actually the process ID of Oracle HTTP server. If you see the process ID, that means Oracle HTTP server process is running. If you shut down Oracle HTTP server, you will, or at the, at the shutdown, Oracle HTTP server will delete this httpd.pid file after a process has been shut down. So this is Oracle HTTP server log for eBusiness Suite. Now I'm going to log into the Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier and then going to show these configuration, both configuration as well as the log file. So let me log into the putty and take you to the eBusiness Suite application tier. So if you notice now I'm on Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier, the owner of operating system user is APPLMGR11. And if you do LS, I see an environment variable ebsapps.env. So I'm going to run this EBS apps.env and now I will source the runtime edition and then I'll go to FMW home. So this is my FMW home inside that I have web tier and then instances and then this is my instance name. Now important this is my Oracle HTTP server instance. Now those who are from fusion middleware background or those who have taken my Fusion middleware training, they understand that Oracle system components like Oracle HTTP server will have a Oracle instance and that's where the config diagnostic everything will sit. So in our case, in order for configuration, we'll go to config folder and inside the config folder, there'll be OHS and then component name again. And important thing to note here is one is this httpd.conf. This is the conf file and any connection to the weblogic server will be defined in mod wl ohs.conf. So something like that, there'll be one more here, mod wl ohs.conf. So open httpd.conf and then look for, so this is where my access log configuration is. And then there is a another one more logging configuration where I can set debug or enable. So this is the parameter here where I say the log level control and currently it's set to warning. I can change it to debug or info or notice. So this is my configuration file. And then in order to find the log actual log file, so I'm back to the Oracle instance and now this time I'm going to go to diagnostics. Under diagnostics, logs, OHS and 
which is component name. So this is my file, diagnostic file. And if I do a tail minus F access log, any request that I hit will come here. So let me open a browser and type my URL. So if I'm, I'm going to the EBS URL and typing a atul.txt for example, just to check whether the request is hitting on the access log or not. And if you see here, there's a atul.txt which came here from a machine 192.168.1.102. That's my client IP. This is the date on which the request came. Requested for getting a atul.txt. This is the HTTP1 protocol. 404 means page not found. And this was the size returned to the user. So that's how you know that request is hitting and working properly into Oracle eBusiness Suite. Now, other thing to look here is this PID file I was saying, HTTP.PID. So do a cat on HTTP.PID. Now the process ID is 11484. So if I do PS minus EF and grep for 11484, and I see the process ID is here 11484 and it's running HTTPD workers. Now other thing is for some reason, if my Oracle, if there's any problem, that will be reported it into the one of these consoles OHS log files. So let's suppose console is here. Currently, the last error was connection refused 5575. 5575 was basically my Oracle Access Manager proxy port. So that timestamp on this error was around October 27th, which means four days ago, my Oracle Access Manager was down. And if I shut down my Oracle Access Manager, manage server, I'll start getting this error, which means my Oracle Access Manager host and then port number 5575 connection refuse. So this is how you can see if there's any problem. Then other thing you need to look at is access log, EBS this file, oblog.log .log is for webgate log, which we'll, we'll see a little bit later and then console log. So let's see what we see in EBS access log, EBS underscore web underscore sit dot log. And this is where it's going, I'm reporting or it's telling me that what are the connections happening. So if you see, I got an error 32, page not found, file does not exist for this error, for this because there's nothing called atul.txt on the server. And that's how you get, or you can troubleshoot Oracle HTTP server. So this completes debugging or logging in Oracle HTTP server. In the next lesson, we are going to look at how to enable debug in WebGate. That is a policy enforcement point that again, WebGate sits in Oracle eBusiness side. And after that, we'll look at Oracle Access Manager logging. So head on to the next lesson where we look at these two component debugging that is WebGate debugging or logging into the WebGate and Oracle Access Manager log file. So I'll see you in next lesson.